We're set. We're live. Hello, hello. Linda, let me know if you can hear us. They got things Come on in. The see right over here, uh, Scott. You'll see the comments. They got everything. deadly snakes, and you know those gators are big and mean. And I mean, uh, they just it, lay if there I smoke and I smoke this way, hey, I'll tell them. I'll tell them. Yeah. Hello, come on in, you guys. Come it's on in. It's kind of like the swamp we have up in Washington, D.C. Come on in. See, this tells how many people are on it. It's everybody watching and commenting. I know it's crooked politicians keep cheating. Not him. Not crooked politicians. All right. All right, you guys. Um, Enough music. That's um, Pastor Steve Warren. And you guys um, got my special guest on here tonight. I've been waiting to do this for, I don't know, about a month now. You guys, and I'm wearing his shirt. This is um, Ohio State Rep Scott Lips. He's a friend of mine, all right? And it ain't many times a guy like me gets a, an Ohio State Rep sitting in his um, dining room. Well, I got, my kitchen's so small, I got one table here, but um, Scott's here. Now, um, you guys, um, I, Linda, I'm going to do a test. I know you can hear me because I got a big mouth. Um, Scott, you try it and see if they can hear you. Tell everybody hello and... Um, well, hi, Linda, and hi, everyone. Thank you for having me. We're uh, we're in Don's dining room. Yeah, well, it's a makeshift studio. It, it's a poor man's studio, but uh, at least we got a backdrop. We got a mic, and um, Linda, are we coming through loud and clear now? Yeah. All right, we are. All right. Great. Well, anyway, Scott, first of all, like I said, I want to thank you for coming over and um, letting everybody get to talk to work. We'll take a few calls here in a little bit, and um First thing I want to say is this man, it, it, he's a great Republican, you guys. There, there's a lot of rhinos out there, but not Scott Lips. And um, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna end something. I'm gonna do something really fast at the beginning of this video. I'm gonna there's an elephant that's been going around our county or you know, Scott Lips's district. He's a state rep of the 62nd district here in Ohio, you guys. And um, he's also the chairman of the health committee here in Ohio. That's why I really don't want to smoke in front of him because he is the chairman of the Ohio health committee here in Ohio. So um, if I do I have to blow it this way, but um, all right, there's been it. Now, Scott, we we're, let's clear it. Um, everybody, there's been a lot of people come around and say, Scott lips is for mandates. Scott lips. I want to know, are you, or are you not for mandates? I am 100% opposed to mandates, Don. And there. it's, we've made it clear Let's go back four years ago to House Bill 193, Representative Hagan, Christina Hagan. The bill was a mandate bill for to stop forced flu shots. Okay. So clear back long before any of the stuff of the last two years had ever started, I was fighting to stop flu shot mandates. And we got that bill out of committee. So we showed we we first of all, the speaker didn't think we could do it. And we did. And then sadly, the speaker killed it and wouldn't bring it to a vote in those days. So we have a good history of that. Uh, about two years ago, I was speaking to one to one of the communities that don't believe in forced vaccines or mandates. And I made the statement that if we don't, it made the papers. And I, I apologize. I'm going to quote. I'm going to give you the quote. Go ahead. I made the statement. If we don't stop this vax shit, then we're going to have vaccine passports in a year from now. So I'm on record as saying we have to stop this now. The problem is our detractors cut the front out and said, Scott Lips just said, we're going to have mandates. No, I said, if we don't fix it, if we don't stop all this, that's where the Democrats are trying to take this or the media are trying to take this. So, so I've got a nice track record. Um, the reason I think it's alive today, Don, is everything about health committee. Um, HB 248 was the bill that landed in health committee that would have prevented most of what we're talking about. Um, but we've never had the votes to get it out. So I don't want to take too much time with, with the mechanics, but for the audience, you have to have nine votes to get a bill out of health committee. Then it goes to the speaker rules and reference committee, and then they'll decide if they're going to put the bill on the floor for a vote. To pass a bill, you have to have 50, okay. but 50 probably is so narrow because remember that's 50 to 49. That's too narrow. And the Senate may not pick the bill up thinking it doesn't have enough support. So you really have to have more votes than that to show you have strength. So we need more votes to get the Senate to pick the bill up. 
if the Senate were to pick it up and pass it, it goes to the governor. Now, should our governor veto it, you'd have to have 60 votes for a veto override. Right. So it's much better to work a bill on the front end and get that much support. So, for example, 248, it opens up all uh, history of of the type of shots that we're talking about, the jab, as everybody calls it. Right. Uh, it goes backwards and picks up things that historically we accept in our society now, like measles or mumps or rubella. Polio and all that Pol stuff right. that we have when we were going to school, right? Correct. But those, so, those were very effective, though. Those well, Scott, they're still, they were effective. believe me, Don, I have found out in, in the last two years, there's more vaccine injury than anyone would ever tell you. Really? People don't wow. want, they don't, so it's not, now, the new unproven vaccine called the MNRA, mRNA, that's a different vaccine style. So I'm, I'm, if, if we could have modified or amended 248 to make it these new vaccines, I believe we'd have picked up and, and we, I don't know if we'd have had nine. We had five votes in Health Committee. I don't know if we'd have got all the way to nine, but we would have been close. So that would have helped us move the bill. But because we could not make that amendment, uh, 248 died. It had an interesting thing happen along the way, and that was testimony that got a little bit out of control from a doctor in the Cleveland area who made some statements that... Some uh, crazy kind of statements. Well, they huh? harmed the bill. I mean, I, I, I truly believe she believed it. I right, do. I right. think she was sincere. And there's a lot of, but, a lot, there's a lot of people into that. I mean, they uh, do think it does some weird things. The but public I, couldn't get their arms around it. The media couldn't get their arms around it. I mean, some of the magnetism or... Uh, one of them was that it binds our mind together through cell phone technology, yeah, yeah, and the cell phone towers. So there were some problems. And then in a big exchange of texts, I was arguing, saying, we don't want this particular witness. Her name was Dr. Tenpenny. We didn't want her to testify. And the bill sponsor, Representative Gross, demanded it. So, OK, that's it's her bill. But everything I, got twisted on you, though. They twisted well, everything on Scott Lips. They, you know how they do things. They twist it. I got I finally so frustrated, I said, fine, if, you, if that's what you want with your bill, we won't be able to undo the damage, but okay, fine, you can have Dr. Tenpenny. And then all of a sudden they posted, see, Lips liked Tenpenny. No, I never liked the witness, but <laughs> wow. the bill sponsor liked the, bit, in it, the witness. And Don, it's her bill. She's, right. she's worked very hard on this bill. So, But the problem is now we lost control of the narrative and it got a little crazy. So... All the way now, we talked about the last two years. The last month, a month ago, we had the Speaker of the House and leadership came up with 435. That's a watered down 248. It did not have the votes from the Republicans. And I'm going to tell you the truth it shouldn't have had. It did not have a discrimination clause. So companies could still discriminate and say, you don't have the vaccine, you have to go sit at the back of the bus, or you don't even get to work in the building. And if you do have the vaccine, you even get a bonus. So the discrimination was allowed in this bill. So the Republicans wouldn't pass it. So the speaker got frustrated and said, we are moving on. This was a press conference. You're going to go back and watch it. He said, we're moving on to redistricting and we're moving on to legalized gambling because we've been working on that bill for about two years. And all of the contiguous states have it now but us. So, so that upset everybody. The very next day, this is all documentable. I put an agenda out for health committee that brought 248 up and had a PV. PV in our world says possible vote. I was going to try to see what would happen. And the speaker, I think everybody knows, the speaker put out a formal notice canceling my meeting. He didn't take me off the health committee, but he did cancel my meeting. And that was a month ago, and I've not had a health committee, committee meeting since that day. So I tried to keep the narrative alive. I want to talk about vaccines. If you will add a discrimination clause to 435, it gives you and I 75% of everything we wanted in 248. 75 is better than zero. And right now we got zero. And, and the, main, the main thing is Scott Lips is a, is a patriotic American. He does not want to force anything on the American people. The people in Ohio, he does represent... Um, I'm pretty, how many how many people do you represent? 120,000 in Warren County. 120,000 people this man represents in, in the state of Ohio. This in his district, the 62nd district of Ohio. But um, again, I'll end it right there. Scott Lips is not for any kind of mandates. All right. He is a true Republican. He's not a rhino. We do have a lot of rhinos. I'm not going to mention no names. Um, 
and they're in all states, not just Ohio. We got a problem in this country with rhinos, but this man is not a rhino. Um, I wouldn't be wearing his shirt if he was. Um, he's actually a good friend of mine. He lived down a road. Um, he's he's been here playing basketball with my my grandchildren. Um, but five houses or yeah, ten houses I mean, down yeah, the road. just a, few, a couple blocks down the road. And listen, I live in a part of Franklin called Hollywood. All right, and um, I know this this will get more views later on, but we're going to go into some other stuff that Scott is um, and the rest of the Republicans that's with him is working on here in Ohio. And um, I hope you guys, the ones from Ohio, I'll put our number. I'll put the number up, take a few calls when he's done here. But um, I guess Scott's going to say, tell us the little things he's going to, that's coming up in the state of Ohio. Some, some bills, right, Scott? Yeah. About guns. You guys know all Republicans, we like guns. Um, we, we, we all like our guns. So Scott, what, what do you what do you got going on in Ohio when it comes to guns? Well, I'd love to talk about it and show you what's happening. And I want to end my portion on this opening by saying we had a Republican caucus last week, two days in a row, and we aired it all out and talked about guns and, and some very important Republican strategies, lower taxes, for example, stopping the mandates. But passing 435 with a discrimination clause was not one of the main topics. So I'm going to give a shout out to a freshman representative named Ron Ferguson. And I know he's tried to help Representative Gross pass her bill, um, stood up in caucus and took a real shot and said, thank you. All of this stuff is very important, but time out. We should be talking about the discrimination clause to get it into 435. So so that's good hope for us. Good hope for me that we are not done. We will not walk away from this. So so okay. possibly in the future. There won't be any mandates come January the 4th then for the people in Ohio. Hopefully. I want, I, we have to get this bill passed now. Now that's, a, you're making a great point there, Don. Um, an emergency clause. A lot of people want to know if we put an emergency clause on a bill, remember this audience, that means it can take effect 10 days from the governor signing it. 10 days. 10 days. Without an emergency clause, it's 90 days. So we're months out, do right? You think, do you think Mike DeWine, our, our Republican governor, would sign a bill like that, though? You remember back during this whole thing how he was on TV every day? It's just like he, you couldn't get enough of seeing him. I mean, I, I didn't even want to watch him, but um, every day he was on here just to, Didn't I, you buy the bobblehead and get him to no, autograph it? I thought, no. I thought you... Uh, you guys, I was... Listen, I, I was forced to vote for DeWine. I didn't want to vote for Richard Cordray. I didn't want to vote for a Democrat, okay? So I was kind of forced to vote for him. Scott, I... I kind of feel bad. I should have left that part blank, but I, I didn't want to have a Democratic governor. So I had to vote for the lesser of two evils, and I hate doing that. I hate vo voting for the lesser of two evils. I really hate doing that. I, I can't speak for the governor. I can tell you that we can't get the emergency clause. We can't because it takes, it takes 60, see, it's two-thirds, so it's 65 or 66 votes to get an emergency clause. That means we would have to have every Republican plus three or four Democrats. And guys, they're just not going to help us with the bill. So first of all, you're never going to get every Republican because some of them are in very moderate districts. Some of them are upside down. They only have a 46-R index. So they already beat a Democrat or pulled a big upset when the numbers were against them. So we won't have, let's say we get 60 Republicans. That means we got to have six Democrats and I don't think they'll do it for us. So that means when you said January, I don't think so. Because even if the speaker would allow 435 to come back with a discrimination clause that can get 56 votes in the House, if the Senate were to pick it up, it w uh, even I mean, if we have the rep we have the majority in the Senate too in Ohio, right? 25 to eight. And how many? How many does it take to, to pass in the Senate? How many votes? Oh well, it would just Is it be like a, three quarters of the votes. Yeah, you 50 know, percent margin. So they've got that. They've got a Republican supermajority. But the question would be, will the governor sign it? And if they do, can we get 60 to override? Should he go veto it? I'm not sure he would veto it. This is an election you're coming. Primaries are in May. Exactly. So 2022. So we need Governor DeWine to support. If we can pull this bill out of the House and the Senate, we need the governor's support. And actually, you're running the election again. In I, I would be up. 22, uh, right? Uh, May 3rd is would be. I'm a junior legislator, everybody, three terms. So I have one term to go. Yeah, um, somebody was asking me today, Scott, about um, uh, what was it? Um, term limits. And um, mm -hmm. I was actually reading today that Ohio, you can only serve what is it, four consecutive terms as a um, Ohio state rep? Four consecutive. Four two year terms as a state rep, or two four year terms as a state senator. State senator. Now we allow house hopping. 
So you can go from state rep to Senate or Senate to state rep. For example, in Michigan, they have six-year term limits and no house hopping. So you're in six years and you're going back home. Really? So there is no, there is term limits then? There are. They're very strict in Michigan. Okay. So the reason I bring up house hopping is there are a couple senators and a couple state reps that have been there 20 years. Wow. And you'd think, well, how in the hell can you do that with eight-year term limits? Well, it's, they hopped back and forth between the houses. By the way, it, in term limits will be a whole other discussion some night, Don, when we're hanging out. But the shorter the term limit, the more power that goes to the bureaucrat because the bureaucrat knows you're on a short noose leash and you're going to be gone. So the bureaucrats, Ohio Department of Jobs and Family Services, anybody ever had any trouble with them? Anybody ever heard about a billion dollars fraud in unemployment? JFS. And if we are term limited out quickly, they know they can just drag their feet as a bureaucrat. So I'm, I'm right. going to tell you, term limits don't help sometimes. But one thing I want to ask you about the U.S. government. Do you okay. believe people like Nancy Pelosi should be in there 46, 50 years? Do you, do no. You, no. 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 Come on, Scott, tell them. I don't think anybody should. I believe 12 term limits should be 12 years. Maxed 12 out. years and you get to go home. State or. I think that 12 years defeats the purpose of the bureaucrats. The bureaucrats can't keep dragging their feet. Think about a state rep. Four terms. Your first term of freshman. You don't have the contacts, the relationships. You don't know the people that are powerful yet. You don't know who's going to help you. Your senior term, you're starting to lose power because they know you can't run for re-election. Right. That means there's early only four years that bureaucrats have got to avoid you. So I don't, I don't think anybody that cares about you and the things you stand for likes bureaucrats. You know what? You know what I hate to be about a, a, a representative. What I would hate about that job is you got to run every two years. I mean, to me that would. I'm just going to say running every two years would suck because, I mean, you're working a year and a half and, and you're you're out campaigning another half year or a year. It's not a half. It's a full year. I mean, So you're out here camping. So they're campaigning a full year. Well, everybody is. The primary is in May. So all campaigns are starting wow. now. I mean, so so what it is and why Ohio gets hurt is you work a year, you campaign a year. You work a year, you campaign a year. So Ohio is not getting a full investment. Right. And, and the, the 99 people you put up here to fix things and figure it out, we're not up there. You, you get so a half, you get a year of that yeah, term. So I agree that that's it's, it. Should probably be four year, like the Senate. I think it should too. Because I mean, that way, they're three work three one, run one work three run one. That's a little I, better. System. I think you would get more done that way. Well, Congress is that way. Look at Steve Shabbat, Congressman Shabbat. He's every other year. He, yeah, even U.S. Congress uh -huh. have to run every two years. Yeah, but there's the difference. No term limits. No term there, limits. There now, be. Ohio State, it's, he gets to serve <laughs> four consecutive terms, and it's over, right? Yeah. But you can go to the Senate, though, right? There, I could. There should be term limits, though, at the United States Congress. Yes. Well, don't the senators, they get six years. The U.S. senator gets six-year term, but right? No, but no term limits. No term limits. Um, but with the president now, he gets two terms, two four-year terms. It's over with. But let's move on. Um, I'm gonna guns. 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 We're, we're going to talk some guns now. And when, when Scott gets done talking about what's coming down the pipeline here in Ohio with guns, I'm going to put my phone number up, and I'm going to let a few of you call in and ask Mr. Lips some questions. Scott. And, uh, Scott Lips. Scott. Uh, he don't, Scott. He don't want Scott. me to call him Mr. Lips, all right? So, I don't call you Mr. Wisman. Well, I, he, he, he's like another one of my friends I got. He don't want me to call him Mr. Lips. He wants me to call him Scott. So Scott's going to talk about some guns, some things that's coming down the pipeline here in Ohio. So, um. Scott, take it away, brother. I want to compliment a couple state reps. So you in the audience that do appreciate our rights to have guns know how hard these, these people have worked. Representative Kyle Kaler, who is a senior representative from Springfield, Ohio, truly understands the gun issue. He, he gets it. He has worked very hard, very critical gun bill sitting in the house right now. Kyle's been behind. Secondly, Representative Scott Wiggum, Worcester, Ohio, so that's Wayne County. Scott's a junior legislator that came in when I did, and I have to tell you that that uh, Representatives Kaler and Wiggum are very good on the gun issues, very solid. So, so let's. The reason I say that is when I look at all the gun bills in the House, their names keep popping up. So. Um, there are gun bills right now to revise the concealed handgun license requirement that you don't have to notify upon the stop. Because in Ohio right now, remember, if you get pulled over, it's on you, the driver, to tell the officer. And we had a situation in Akron, Ohio, where 
a person who was a conceal and carry did notify the officer. A second officer came on, notified the second officer, a third and fourth officer. But the fifth officer that came on to this crime scene, he did not notify to and ended up and got in a scuffle, had his arm broken and was arrested because he didn't identify to the fifth officer. Wow. So Representative Wiggum, who I just talked to you about, Scott Wiggum, this is his second or third trial in this bill because we believe that the authorities, first of all, they're looking at it and they know you're a concealed and carry for they ever come up to your car. That's what I thought when they read your license. Right. They and they tell. shouldn't, they know that, but they should come up and ask or say, are you carrying? So it, why are we putting that off on the conceal and carry holder? Right. One of the most responsible human beings in the world is a conceal and carry yes, license sir. holder in Ohio. There's a million of us and we didn't shoot anybody today. No, so, you're right. So that's house bill 89. So keep your eye on that. Um, there's also a bill by Representative Wiggum, again, House Bill 297, on enacting firearms on the industry to non-discriminate. So that industry now is having banking problems because our federal government is not in favor of guns. So they are making it hard for manufacturers of weapons to finance themselves, to borrow money. So there's discrimination occurring. So this bill would prevent that in Ohio. So that's, again, Scott Wiggum up in Worcester, you guys. Um, Kyle Kaler is modifying penalties for weapons offenses. So he's trying to get the, wep the penalties out of there for those of us. Um, Representative Grindell on H.R. 12, it's a resolution that declares Ohio a Second Amendment protective state. Um, but there's one big one, and I saved it for last because this will be the best one, and that is House Bill 227. Uh, Representatives Brinkman and Jordan, and it regards a concealed weapons and concealed carry without a license. So he's talking about constitutional carry, right? That's Here right. in the state of Ohio. That's right. So um, how many states, Scott, do you, do you know how many states in the country right now have constitutional carry? I, I should have looked that up before you came. Um, You're the gun expert in the room. Um, I'm, I'm a conceal and carry. Well, I, I, but somebody out there, please tell me how many states in the country right now are conceal and carry. Um, all right, Mel says 21, there's 21, 27. 27. Great, Tony Lawrence. He, he Tony Lawrence. Tony, he's got a lot of guns. So, um, twenty-seven states that are concealed carry. So, um, let's go Ohio. Let's go, Scott. Let's okay. get that. And, so, uh, we held caucus. I mentioned in our first segment that we held Republican caucus. One of the big subjects was House Bill two twenty-seven, and uh, the sponsors of the bill explained it, went over all the details, and we completely analyzed this bill. So, I have here a summary of the bill. Um, and it's exciting because when we did the whip count, we checked where the Republicans were, and there was heavy, heavy support for this bill. So over the weekend, leadership whipped every state representative, and I believe we have the votes. So if, if I were a betting man, this bill we voted on this week. We're in session two days this week, Don, and I believe that House Bill 227, making Ohio a constitutional carry state, I believe it will pass the Ohio House. It's really exciting. Now, I, I've seen a comment on here. Um, Ohio is already an open carry state. Um, I'm, I just want to make that right. clear. But what he's talking about is we're going to join the ranks of like Tennessee and a bunch of other states where it, that eliminates the CCW license. Um, you will be allowed to carry. I, I guess if you're not a, a, a convicted, uh, you got a bad record or something, you'll be allowed to carry um, a concealed weapon in your car your pocket or whatever, as long as you're not a, a convicted felon. And I, I don't even think you, you can't even get a CCW license right now if you're a convicted felon. But, um, Scott, I don't know. I just, I believe in the second amendment of the constitution. I, I do have a CCW license, but the second amendment, I mean, I know everybody has got, they've got laws and they've amended things on the second amendment, but, um, says it shall not, we, 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 the people have the right to bear arms and shall not be infringed. And, um, Ohio, I, I'm glad you guys are going somewhere with this. It, finally, finally, Ohio is finally moving into the, uh, what I'm going to call the future. I mean, because people, states have been doing this already. It's been going on for a while. Don, we've been losing so many rights. I yes. mean, okay, we just talked about mandates. I mean, yeah, we're but, losing some medical freedom rights. People yes. are losing jobs over that. So we're losing our rights now. Taxes. Taxes are spiraling. Uh, supply chain. Things are hard to buy. Our prices are going up. The border. Hell, we've got an open border. Yes. Name another country for me that has an open border, will you? I, I can't name one right off the bat. Um, I, nobody's open. Uh, nobody that I know why, of has Why would border. you open your border? 
votes. So, I think it's for votes. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, yeah. I, mean, I don't know. And they're, <laughs> and they're not vetting these people, neither, Scott. They're not vetting them. Right. Come across. And what about the but, diseases? But they're, they're, they will provide education for them or relocation money, Don. So well, and, 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 and now they're wanting to give Joe Biden said something and he's trying to backtrack. He's wanting to give illegal aliens that were separated under the Trump era four hundred and fifty thousand dollars. When what about when you got a somebody in the military, um, their family member dies? What do they get? I know they get something, but it ain't four hundred and fifty thousand dollars, Scott. Some of this stuff, when you read it, Don, you, you laugh because you can't you can't even make this up. You can, I would have read that one last week. You can't even make it up. So back on the subject. I believe that in in stepping up and trying to save our rights, while we are trying to get management and leadership to put the discrimination clause into 435, the same time we've been forcing this discussion on guns and protecting our gun rights in Ohio, uh, we're only one vote from losing the Supreme Court. There's four Republicans, three Democrats. So they would undo a lot of our rights. Yes. So we're going to try to protect ourselves. And I believe that by, by this weekend, one week from today, this will have passed the Ohio House, and I'm very excited about now, it. Now, Scott, I'm going to ask you, and, um, how long do you think it'll take for you guys to get this done, get through the Senate, and be on Mike DeWine's desk for him to put constitutional carry, make it a law in Ohio that we can carry without a permit? What's the soonest, you think? Just an estimated time. I don't know where the bill's at in the Senate. I don't. I, that's something I've not. We've been trying to work the House so hard, trying to yeah, get members I, I to get on board. I wish George Lang on the phone, maybe. <laughs> right, we could get <laughs> Representative or Senator Lang. Yeah, uh, who would I think believe, be in favor of a bill like this? I, I can't speak for him, but he would certainly allow us the opportunity to share our feelings on it. Um, so I don't know. We, one thing is we've worked so hard to get Republicans on on the damn bill that we haven't. I haven't spent time in the Senate talking to any of our friends over there. But I believe if we push this through with a big vote, if we could have 60 Republicans on this bill, that's going to encourage the Senate to pass this bill. So let's say they vet it. They take it through the committee process. It takes them 90 days. That means we could have it on the governor's desk February. Be on the, uh, Mike DeWine's desk February for him to sign. Um, if, he, if he vetoes it now. We got enough people in the Senate to override his veto, Craig. Right, but again, I don't know that you want to veto. We got to you got to think too. It's election year. Next year is election year, right? For even these the are, governor. These are rights that we have. You're right. You can't keep vetoing our rights. I don't. I just don't think the governor. I mean, whether you disagree with him on some of these crazy issues or not, he has a long history of still being a Republican, and I don't. I just don't believe. I believe he would support our rights to to. To, I hope so. I hope weapons. so, Scott. I really do. I mean, I do too. That, that's why I am a Republican. Um, we we have better values, better morals. I mean, look up liberal. Just look up the definition of a Democrat or a li liberal. Look it up and uh, look up the definition of conservative. Um, we 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 believe in old values and we believe in what what else is it? Um, we don't we don't want to tax. I mean, we, we uh, Democrats want to tax and spend. The Republicans they don't want to tax you. And I, I don't know about George Bush. So you remember the famous saying, "Read my lips," but um. There's some Republicans out there, you guys. But um, hello, Floyd. How you doing? But um, Scott, you got anything else you want to talk about on what's coming down the pipeline here in Ohio? I do, I do, Don. Because of your group, and I know your beliefs. I've known you so long. Then I'm gonna open it up, and I'm gonna let a couple of these people, a few people, call you, Scott, if you don't mind. Okay. So, the recent election, to what two weeks ago now, was how much noise was there about what's being taught in our schools? I know and there's a lot about the CRT, the critical race theory. I you, mean, you just see school board races were heating up, and it's, uh, everybody kept saying, "Well, it's not being taught in our schools." And then it, you find out, well, it wasn't being taught under the name CRT, but there were still things I being taught that yes. were discriminative, you know, discriminatory. So um, that this has caught huge attention, as much attention as guns. This in the Ohio House, so I can tell really? you it's been so it's been a you, monster. Is it being taught in the state of Ohio, Scott? I think there are pockets where it's being taught. And I, I would say that Warren County's in pretty good shape. We're safe here, but we're a very conservative, very red county. I got something I want to ask you, Scott. I should have I should have told you about this, but I have a grandson that's in the seventh grade right now. Do you know he does not know how to write his name in cursive? He cannot read cursive. I mean. What do you think about that? I mean, do you think kids should be taught how to write in, in, in cursive? <sighs> a couple years ago, the school systems decided that cursive was no longer a requisite. Right. So it's no longer a requirement. And 
Ain't yeah. that sad? I mean, it's really sad. I mean, what do you think about it? Well, I think it's wrong. I'm not an education expert, so I didn't I, sit on that committee, remember? So I didn't hear the arguments of why they allowed that. But I would say to you that it, it's not a good move. I can't understand how we move forward without being able to I mean, to, you know that write. the Constitution it was written in cursive. Um, the, the Bill of Rights, um, uh, uh, the Declaration of Independence, it was all written in cursive. I mean... And I know kids can go nowadays and they can get on their laptops and they can Google the Constitution, but right. So I, mean, I just it I is don't a know. different time and there's different forms of education and they certainly have cell phones and texting and typing and computers. So, but I I would like to hear and understand that issue better. That, yeah, it's an issue I just don't know anything about. All right, well, I just want to bring up to you that he's in the seventh grade and he does not know how to write his name in cursive. Well. And, um, I, maybe we get an education person in here and talk with them some night. There you go. See, but he's the, willing to look into well, it. Well, so. we could get a committee member in from the education committee, Chairman See? Manning, for example. All right. Um, so let's get back to real quick, though, to the CRT. Okay. Because it's been such a big issue. And while the media will tell you that's not occurring, we have found that in some cases – not under the name CRT, perhaps, but there have been things taught to our students that I think we would question. I think we would be, you would be surprised. We were certainly surprised in some cases. So just to make sure that, that education is protected and that there is no funny business going on, let's say, um, representatives have introduced two bills to protect and clean up and define this educational process or so eliminate discriminatory practices here teaching. So Representative Jones has a bill called House Bill 322 and Representatives Grindell and Fowler Arthur have, rep have House Bill 327. They're both in committee. We spent an inordinate amount of time in committee last week talking about these two bills and it was great. It was, it was, I, I, sometimes you'll watch the room and members don't engage the, the representatives in the room engaged. There was 37 or 38 people all drilled down watching and listening and paying attention to this. So what we, we did not end up and decide to vote on either bill. What, what the suggestion was, was for the representatives or sponsors of both bills to meet this week and try to see if they can combine their bills into one. One bill they felt was too soft one bill they fought was too hard. So if they could slap these two bills together, get us one solid bill that accomplishes the goal. So, so we have caucus this week. So maybe in a week I'll have a report and I can send it to you and you can get it out to your audience on how we move these two bills into one. I just, Scott, the CRT or whatever they want to brand it by, whatever name to me, I, I just think it causes more division. I, I think it's hate. I mean, you shouldn't, I'm not going to get into it right here. You know, you shouldn't, teach that one race is bad, you know, that one race has been oppressed. Scott, I never, I don't even hear about racism. I grew up and I never heard about racism until Barack Obama became president. Then you started hearing about racism and then it went away. Then, then uh, Trump was coming up for reelection, you know, when they, when they went and peaced him the first time and uh, they knew they couldn't get him because of the economy. So what comes along, you know, what came along, uh, the sea, the you know, the big, the virus came along. Then the George Floyd thing came along. Now race is a big issue, but I don't, I've never been a racist person, Scott. I've, I've never really thought about being hating another man because of his color of his skin. And uh, it seems like that's something the Democrats want to do. They want to push that division between us, you know, whites against blacks. I don't think they should be doing that. I, I know you can't do much about it. We're in your position. Um, I, I can't, I, I can fight and I can certainly support this concept here of, of not allowing I mean, uh, what do you think about CRT? What do you think about critical yeah. race theory or whatever name they, they want to call it in, in, in yeah. an Ohio school system? I mean, yeah, it shouldn't be part of our school system. I'm just going to read a little bit of this bill analysis. Point two, it prohibits a state agency or public school system from teaching any administrator, teacher, staff member, or an employee to adopt or believe in any specified concept. So we're not calling it CRT. We're calling it a specified concept where they're teaching you or indoctrinating you to one form of belief. So number three, it prohibits the state board of education from adopting any model curriculum regarding specified concepts. So we're not going to allow a model curriculum that's being offered in a Democrat state, a blue leaning state to be brought here. I'll get it. I got your nose here. But somebody asked me a question. Yeah, Philip, he, he supports Donald Trump. Oh. <laughs> you support Trump. <laughs> Scott, do you support president Trump? I do. So, 
I got to tell you a funny story. For those of you not in Franklin, where Don and I live, so do you remember Denny Fitzgerald? Who yes. Fitzgerald Flowers? Yes. A great guy. Died. Yeah, passed away. Big member of our Masonic Lodge and just this active guy. Donated flowers to every cause you ever thought of. Wonderful human being. A Democrat. Okay, so <laughs> he was 100% behind me. He had lip signs everywhere on his car and at his house and at his business. I went over to his business one day to get some flowers. And out on the front, there was a big Scott Lip sign and a big Hillary Clinton sign. Oh. And I, I went in and I said, Denny, you got to stop. We, we I cannot do that. And I had to take that Hillary Clinton sign down. Oh, God. <laughs> Linda's uncle was the same way down the road. He had a Biden sign and a Lip sign. Oh. And, uh, what's that about? Yeah, but anyway, no, no. yes, he does support President Trump. And, oh, um, I sure do. And I guess you want to see him come back in 2024. What I, do you think? I would like to see him or who he How's he going to lead the party? I'll tell you what I'd like. I'd like one of those. Have you seen the Christmas ornament, ornament the Christmas ornament that Trump has out with the hat? I, I think He's so, got yes. the, a great Christmas ornament. I'd like to have that. I want that Donald Trump signed baseball. He's got those out now. Okay. So, yeah, it's fascinating. I've never got to meet President Trump. You never got to meet Trump? Never got what to about meet. Mike Pence? Now, I know yeah. you guys don't like Mike Pence now yeah. because of what happened on January the 6th, but... I did get to meet Pence, um, Me and I'm sure you could have met Trump through these rallies if you'd had time, right? I, well, I was never offered the opportunity. Really? I did get to meet Vice President Pence several times. I got to attend a meeting on small businesses because I own, before I was ever doing this, you know, I own a small business here in Franklin, and that's what our family does. So um, Pence picked, they picked about 10 small business people in Ohio and we got to be in a roundtable discussion. And I got to tell you, you know he does hundreds of these things. And you know he doesn't have to care. But at the end of the meeting, he came up to me and started talking about my discussion. And I went, you rem- you listened? You remember? He absolutely remembered and listened to every point. I used so, to think he was a great guy, honestly. But I, on January the 6th, Scott, we was all just wanting Mike Pence not to, not to certify that election. It's all we had to do is just, I mean, be a Republican, be, be Donald Trump's vice president, throw the pen and say, I refuse to sign this. I refuse to sign it. What would it hurt? What would it have gave him, like 10 days or something like that? that I don't know. I'm not going to get Scott into this, you guys. I'm not. But <laughs> I was there. Uh, Scott, you know, I was in Washington, D.C. on Vaccines, January 6th. Vaccines, guns, I, CRT, nothing yeah, heavy here, Don. I, I wasn't at the Capitol. I didn't go to the Capitol. I stayed up. I, I, I got froze out, actually, Scott, but um. Actually, you guys, I'm going to put um, the number up, and I'll take a few calls, and we'll let Scott answer a few questions. I don't know. Maybe he can um, help us out here. It's, um, let's see, one, three, four, three, five. And, yeah, Scott, I put my phone number right here live. Um, I hope that's it. Yeah. I put my personal number up here, Scott, and um, so far I haven't got any weird calls in the middle of the night. <laughs> so um, the number's up there, so you guys can call in now. And, wow. And we're getting a call from my buddy, David Jones. Hi, David. Hello, David Jones. How you doing, buddy? Hello, my brother, Donald. Hello, Scott. Hey, David. How are you? I'm doing great, brother. And uh, I know I'm calling from North Carolina, and uh, I know that's kind of odd, somebody from North Carolina keeping up with Ohio politics. But uh I have uh, researched you, and I have watched you, and I just want to let you know, if you ever want to move to North Carolina, I will back you <laughs> for uh, anything down here, brother. Well, thank I will. you. That's kind of you. It's been a tough year. Um, I, w- I wouldn't recommend being chairman of health during a world global health pandemic. It's, it's time-consuming. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just want to say hello to my brother. I, uh, I'm uh, with Blue Lodge 472 down here. Oh, wow. So, uh, That's nice. Great. Well, welcome uh, to you. Yeah, I'm very proud I, of when I, I when I speak on the House floor, I wear a Masonic pin or a Masonic tie because the fraternity, is, it's such a strong fraternity of, of, of making a positive impact in the community. So that's right. They uh, we do our best, don't we? Yeah. Thank you. I but, didn't uh, know you was I, I didn't know you was a Mason, David. Yeah. Oh, great. We were just talking about that before we went live. Um, Linda's grandpa. Yeah. Uh, my wife's grandpa. Well, he was a. I don't know. Scott's really like high up in the Masonic Lodge. I don't know. Oh, 33rd whatever. degree. Yeah. I don't know anything. I'm not, I'm not a Mason, David, so I don't know much we about We can it. fix that. Uh, David and I can sign that petition. Wow. I, I, don't, <laughs> I, don't <laughs> mind, I don't mind to be a Mason. I wouldn't mind. Wait, we'd have to vet him, David. I, he might not make it. 
Oh yeah, you know, I, I only uh, I only got up to thirty third degree, so oh, uh, whoa, just nice, nice, nice. That's it. That's so. pretty good. Yeah, David, he's a veteran, and he was also a police officer for like fourteen years. So. Wow, thanks for your service. That's been a tough, tough year for law enforcement too. Yeah, I think you're doing it again with this case that's up right now. Yeah, I just got two questions for you, and I'm gonna I'm gonna get off here because I know there's a lot of fellow Ohioans up there who'd love to ask you some questions. Um, I'm just going to ask you a couple questions and then just let you go, and I ain't going to say nothing. Okay. Um, I've been keeping up with my local politics and my state politics down here is Donald T. Yeah. And uh, two big questions I've got uh, on uh, what can the states do uh, to stop or to arrest these illegals that are being deposited throughout the United States by the federal government and – what can the state do to uh, hold these uh, uh, county DAs or city DAs and uh, local law enforcement um, with meeting with the FBI on these school board issues? Yeah. Well, that was a real sh shock when they went down the FBI rabbit hole. Mm -hmm. I was a little surprised. Let's go back to number one. I like number one, the illegal thing. It's a, It's a federal issue, obviously, so states are struggling with it. But I thought Governor DeWine did a hell of a good job with that. He sent uh, members of our National Guard, our Ohio National Guard, to Texas yeah. to work on the border. And then he himself traveled down there with 16 other Republican governors to show a strength and support and uh, a camaraderie that we are paying attention and this can't go on. So I thought DeWine really stepped up there. The media, of course, crushed him. And said that here he was down here, you know, meddling in issues that he shouldn't be meddling in. But somebody damn where needs to meddle in it. So, so what can yep. we do? Is I think one, we continue to make ask Governor Dewine to stand tall on that issue and fight that issue. Um, the second issue you're talking about, um, your county prosecutors will have some say in that. Um, and I know, speaking for Warren County, our prosecutor David Fornshell has been a, a wonderful stalwart. Um, he's also, besides working on and, and attacking people for running the school boards, he's working ag against legislation that softens these penalties. You may have seen that two states have removed the penalties for shoplifting. Mm -hmm. So now shoplifting is not arrest an arrestable uh, I've seen that. Penalty. I was reading something about Well, they're that. looting. They closed five Walgreens in San Francisco because they were looted and wiped out because there's no penalty for shoplifting. So, so I think our, our prosecutors, it would be very critical to start watching your prosecutor elections and make sure your counties elect a firm, solid Republican prosecutor. So that goes back to local, don't it? Sure does. It's all going to start local. We can't control federal. They're crazy. They're, <laughs> they're well, go ahead. They're, well, you I, almost I, heard him. He, I, he almost yeah. said it, David. Federal's off yeah. the rails, right? We can't control. They're so far off the rails right now that we have to take care of ourselves in the meantime. Well, I sure do appreciate your time and I appreciate your answers and uh, I respect you. And uh, like I say, if you ever need anything uh, from down here in North Carolina, you just let me know. Uh, I ain't got a problem coming up there and politicking for you. Well, thank you. <laughs> That's kind of you. Thanks, Jones. Well, All righty, brother. Remember, remember, everybody, it starts local. It starts local. Yes, it does. Thank you, Mr. Jones. All righty. Take care. All right, buddy. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Uh, let me see here. We'll call us coming in. Hello. Can I get your first name and what state are you calling from? I'm Josh, and I am calling from the shithole known as Illinois. <laughs> oh, God. What's up, Josh? <laughs> Not much. How are you guys? <laughs> I'm just sitting here trying, trying to, uh, I don't know, I'm just talking to my, my state rep here in Ohio. I, I'm loving the conversation so far. I do want to get on the record. Uh, I'm glad you got to meet Mike Pence, but he is a traitor to this country. Oh, he I took his picture a fraudulent now. election, and he knows it was a fraudulent election, and he didn't even want to have the time to check into it. I mean, that's all people were asking for. Do the right thing, get the count right, and then certify it. But, you know, he, he wouldn't do that. So I wanted to just get that out on the record and uh, basically just call in the vent a little bit hey. and say, I hope I hope this country gets more people that are America first, or we're in big, big trouble. Big, yeah. big trouble. Yes, you know, Josh. We've got a midterm coming up in a year and a half that's going to make a huge difference. I, 
I think so. I'm I, from what we've seen in Virginia. I think that's just the tip of the iceberg. Yeah. I think this whole country is going to turn red after after the, you know what's been going on in this country is just insane anymore. Well, Virginia and New Jersey. And, I mean, they've they turned. I mean, that was a big big swing there for. Well, look at that turnover. Right. One that right. One that he didn't Senate. spend any money. One hundred fifty bucks. Yeah. 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 And, and one right. state Senate, Josh. He yeah, and I was waiting for I was waiting for the old you know three o'clock in the morning ballot drop there too. But <laughs> yeah, apparently, yeah, just wait till everybody goes to bed. Count what you want. had to count. give us some kind of win, <laughs> right? Yeah. So you bring up but, Illinois. Uh, I'm a my master's degree is from DePaul University in downtown Chicago in, in Illinois. Okay. And it, okay. Was, it was obviously liberal, and uh, in those days they had not controlled some of the panhandling and the the downtown people the who live yeah. downtown. So it was really a struggle uh, at DePaul, yeah. I have to tell you. Yeah, I, I, I'm just so disappointed in Illinois. The taxes are going up through the roof. Uh, cost of living is going up through the roof. Your pay stays the same, always. Uh, Chicago, we live near Chicago. Thankfully, we're about two hours away from Chicago, but we can't even go enjoy Chicago anymore. It's a war zone. I mean, it mm. is literally a war zone in Chicago, wow. and nobody does nothing. Yeah, nothing. That's... Not a, not a damn thing. I mean, well, you're more likely to get shot in Chicago than you are ever to die of COVID. I don't mean to be so partisan. It's just, but I'm telling you, the media is who's not telling the story. It's happening. People's oh. lives are being changed, but the media oh, yeah. won't tell us that. The media will yeah. not reveal the facts, the truth of what's I, happening. I've been telling right. Scott, they're weaponized. The media have become weaponized in this country. Yeah, they're the strong arm of the Democratic Party. Well, that's they couldn't I mean, control Donald Trump. The media hates Donald Trump because they right. couldn't control him. He wasn't going right. to put up with their lies. So, so I mean, okay. just like the other day, could you imagine if Trump stood up there and called uh, Satchel Page a Negro? Yeah. Can you imagine what would have happened in the media if he would have yeah. done that? And they would have hung. But Joe but... Biden, Joe Biden gets away with it. It's insane. Well, it's like he gets a total pass. Well, you know, he can say Negro and and I mean, you know, I don't know. Um, it's always seemed like the Republicans get in trouble, Josh. You know that. Um, oh and, yeah, and, and and I, gotta, that's what needs to. That's I, the part that needs to change, though. I think Republicans need to take some take some playbooks out of their playbook and start playing. I hate to say it, but they're weaponizing the you know the DOJ and everything else against American people against the the uh, political party. That's insane. It, America was never that. meant for that. Ever. You're right. And yet, here we are. You're right. Well, Josh, yes, I'm gonna so. take a call from Tony. He does live in Ohio. So um see you, Josh. All right, well, good talking to you guys. See you, Josh. All right, bye Pray Josh. for Illinois, will you? <laughs> All right, we will. Bye, Josh. Uh, bye. Ah crap. Hang on, Tony. I'll call you back, Tony. Hang on a second. I think Tony is from Ohio. Um, Scott. Uh, I think he, I don't know what part. We'll find out. It's starting to climb now. <laughs> So, so, um, hey, Scotty. Hello, Donald. Tony, I figured I'd call you back now. You live in Ohio, so if um, you got any questions for Scott Lips while he's here. Yeah, uh, I'd like to ask Scott uh, if he's heard anything about lately about Ohio becoming a uh, sanctuary, uh, to a sanctuary state. Yes, Um Hang on, he's getting his paperwork out, Tony. Yeah, I, I think I actually have it here. To a sanctuary state. Yeah. You you heard it? Yes. Okay. There's talk of it in the state house right now. Uh, and a representative from Geauga County is kind of the representative that's been leading that discussion. It's not in a bill form. It's in a resolution form. So a resolution is what we would obviously tell the federal government that Ohio believes should happen on a national basis. So it has not been presented as a bill yet. So, but yes, there's talk. There's talk in the House. I think every time we pass one of these gun bills, like this week, we're going to pass House Bill 227. It'll strengthen our call uh, to to become a two A sanctuary state. Well, that's good. So, what do you yeah, think about that, my, Tony? What do you think about trying, Ohio becoming a constitutional carry state? Uh, I want that too. <laughs> <laughs> so, I know. I know it's getting close, but not quite there yet. It's close. It's close, he said, Tony. Anything yeah. else, Tony? Anything uh, else you want to ask him while you're on here? Yeah, I've been wanting to do my own county as a 2A sanctuary county. And uh, what's the best way to go about that? 
on a county level, Scott. Is it possible? Yeah. Wh what county? It's Hardin County. Hardin. Yeah. Do you know who your it's, state representative is? Uh, yeah. I would have to look it up for you. Um, yeah. No, I've got uh, it's Mr. Chris. Uh, Jordan? Uh, he was, yeah, but too quick. <laughs> Chris Jordan? Uh, I don't know. I, I don't Any, know. Anyways, I talked to him, and he didn't, uh, or I didn't talk actually to him, but his people, and, and uh, they kind of hung up on me and wouldn't call me back, wouldn't take my calls after that. Hmm. All I, right. I'll talk to a state rep. Can, said, can you, Tony, can you send Donna, do you text her, Tony? Yeah, Tony, send me a send, send me your te text. Text Tony. Yeah, text Don, and then I'll you forward me the text. And this week, when I get up there Tuesday, I will go track down his state rep and ask about it. Send me your uh, state rep's number or uh, his name or her. Well, name. I'll look that up. Or he said he'll and look. No, that I'll up. take care of that. Just get the text from Tony, the county and name, yep. and let me go to make that contact for you. All right, you heard it right. Yeah, yeah, I can I can do that. Uh, that way, in case the state doesn't go, at least my county will. Maybe yeah, well, but but if enough counties go, I mean, you got some strong red counties: Mercer, Dart, um, Warren, Butler. I mean, we, if we get enough strong red counties, that's going to send the signal. Yeah, that's kind of why I was trying to start there. The state go, uh, uh, she was. Well, I think uh, that <laughs> passing two twenty seven this week will help too. Okay. Yeah, you know, I was going to ask some gun stuff, but you've already answered it, so I won't bother you with that stuff. Okay. Well, if you need me, just but, call Don and tell me. Okay. Well, thank you very much for taking my call. Sure. Thanks, Tony. We appreciate you. you calling, buddy. All right. See bye you, buddy. Now. All right. Bye bye. I'm going to look up his rep. Yeah, he's going to look up Tony's rep. And I'm going to call back. There was a number calling me from South Carolina. Let me call him back and see who it is. Um, calling back the number who was calling from South Carolina. And you guys, the newcomers come in. I'm, I'm sitting here with Ohio State Rep Scott Lips, okay? Hello? Hello? Don. Yes. How you been, brother? This is Don from South Carolina, man. Hello. How you doing tonight? Hey, I'm doing all right, actually. Uh, despite the challenge here in South Carolina, I've been able to get most of what I need, you know, from the shopping and all. There have been shortages on things, but I was lucky enough to get down at the right time of the month and uh, get the majority of what I needed. However, I've been ordering things through the mail so that I can get whatever is not able to be gotten at the store. Let's say medical supplies and stuff like that. Yeah. And it takes about two weeks or so to get here. More importantly, I've seen one of my doctors this past week and I got another one to see in a couple of days. I'm hoping that I can get what they prescribed for me, which I also get in the mail. And uh, with the government, the way they've been in the last year, it's been a little bit harder to make it, even when you don't leave that much. I, you know, because I do a lot of things here from home, and uh, it's been very successful. Well, saved money and everything. You got to think, but, um, a I'm lot just, of things have changed since Trump left that office. I mean, a lot of oh, things have amen, changed. Brother. I, I was I'm, talking to I'm a farmer. For many. I was talking to a farmer yeah. yesterday, and he told me that things were just starting to get good under Trump, and now it's just... What, I mean, he's paid double for his uh, fertilized, double for his fuel, double for his seed. I mean, I feel sorry oh, for yeah. the farmer, Scott. Oh, it's... Well, and, and I'm a friend of many truck drivers because I live like, you know, in the middle of the east here. I've got buddies that have been off the road for so long because of the price of fuel and uh, really lack of supply from the people who are supposed to give it. So I'm concerned for a lot of people in their businesses and and as well as the people like you and I who are trying to survive it, man. I'm praying that we make it through the holidays as decent as possible. And I'm praying even more for that new year to come in with a bang, you know, get some good people running more states again. Well, next year, next year, um, the midterms are here next year. And just hopefully, hopefully I'm not I, like, like in 2018, everybody was saying the red wave, the red tsunami. I'm not going to say that. I'm going to keep fighting like we're losing. Even if we're winning, I'm going to keep fighting like we're losing. Um, 
Yeah, you, so. you got to fight from the bottom up. I'm not going to get too confident until I actually see it um, on, on election night. Um, I remember in 2018 that we, we lost the house. So um, uh, anyway, I'm going to take some more callers, brother. I want to thank you for calling in, all right? All right, you guys have a blessed holiday, and I'll be catching you later, Don. All right, see you later, buddy. Thanks, Bye-bye. Don. Bye-bye. All right, I got Philip Roop calling in from Florida. Philip Roop from Florida. How you doing, buddy? All right. How are y'all doing tonight? Hi, Philip. How you doing, Mr. Lip? Oh, it's Scott. I'm good. Sitting yeah, next don't, to him. Don't I'm call sorry. him Mr. Lips. He'll get all over. He can done got all over me, Tony or Philip. Do you know, Philip, that Don House or Don Wisman hasn't had a cigarette in one hour? Yeah. Huh? Well, well it's I'm, killing him. I'm, I'm, I'm smoking enough cigarettes for him right now. Watching y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Leonard's there laughing. All right, Philip. Now, Philip, you got any questions for Mr. Oh, I shouldn't say it for Scott. You got any questions for Scott? Yeah. Whenever, whenever our government is being tyrannical and stuff like this, who who holds the president and all these people that are doing wrong and are breaking laws and stuff? Who holds them accountable? Well, that's the easy question. The media. <laughs> yeah. There you go, I guess. <laughs> yeah. He's just telling you the truth, Philip. Oh, my God. Is that pathetic? I mean, it should be the media. It's not. They're the right hand of the Democrat Party. So that means it has to be us, Philip. The Republicans. You know, really, you know really, Mr. Scott, uh, y'all are pretty much our last line of defense That's to right. to supporting what's right and what needs to go on with this country. Um, I really hope that y'all's efforts will come true and we can we can fight against it the right way. There's a lot of people out here that is totally pissed and it can go to a different level if it has to go to that. Well, level. I can tell I you don't... something scary happening in Ohio right now, Philip, is there are people who are very upset with our governor. So right. the problem with that is if the governor, if that's our candidate the next time against Mayor Whaley, Nan Whaley, the Democrat mm -hmm. candidate, if people choose not to go vote, we'll lose the Supreme Court. Once you've lost the Supreme Court in Ohio, all the good legislation we work, like this gun bill, it's going to be turned over. So we have to protect the Supreme Court. It's only a four to three in Ohio today. So you're right. We are a line of defense. We've got to stand up. We have to. We're going to have to do some tough work now. It's going to be hard. You know, and I know there's a lot of people. I know there's a lot of people that are out there that uh, that says they're Republican, but they're not. They're like a wolf wearing sheep clothing. And uh, I live here in Florida, so we have DeSantis, which he's a good, strong governor, and I'm glad we got him. He's a good man. Yeah. Um, but you know, we need more Republicans, uh, basically letting us know who the who the dirty is. That'd really help us because y'all really know these guys inside and out. So when y'all find out who the who the people are that really isn't a Republican, they're more of a they're more of a Democrat that's trying to cause problems, but they're running as a a, a Republican. We need to we need to kind of know that because that'll help us for real. I, I don't. I would argue or suggest there's not as many wolves in sheep clothing as you think. They're in moderate districts, tough areas that may not be so red. So they are still trying to represent some of the people in their district, of course. So they're in a tough spot as well. Some we've lost. I agree with you. There is a certain percentage we've lost. And then some are attacked like I am supporting this issue of no mandates, but yet I've just been destroyed by this little faction that wants to primary me. Um, one of them wrote last week, I saw a note by F about Pfizer up here. One of them wrote, well, Lips is bought off by Pfizer. When he was the mayor, they put a Pfizer plant in Franklin, Ohio. Well, that's really great narrative, and you can put that on the internet. It's hard to fight back. The problem is I was the mayor of Franklin in 2008, Don. You lived here. You know that. That Pfizer plant came in 1977. <laughs> it came 40 years before I was ever the mayor. They store things, so, Philip. I mean. So you just can't. Yeah, how do you fight that? This man's been under attack stuff? here. This man's been under attack all summer, and um, that's why I wanted him to come over here tonight, just to set the record straight. And Scott Lips is a straight shooter. And he's not for mandates. That's that's one of the main well, reasons I'm wanting him we, here tonight. And and Philip, I agree with you. We still we have got to rally our party. That's why I believe just one example, House Bill 227, the constitutional carry law in Ohio. We're probably going to rally 60 Republicans around that out of 64. That's getting it done. Yeah, that's getting it. And done. definitely, 
definitely, Mr. Scott, I have a YouTube channel too, and I'm always pushing people to vote. I know a lot of people, uh, um, they say, well, Philip, why should I vote? Look what happened last time. But I always tell people on my channel, my YouTube channel, to always vote because that's so important. And we need to stand strong against this and unite and, uh, and back our good Republican people that's in office and really turn. And there's a lot of people that, that turn it over. I mean, a lot of people are seeing what's going on. And I think it's going to be a, a great time for the midterms. I think, I think a lot of people has done seeing how evil these, these people are and what they're pulling. And we're not going to stand for it. I mean, we're just not. We're, we're getting tired of it, and they're, they're uh, destroying uh, things of this country that we stand for. And uh, they're, they're trying to attack us. They're calling us, you know, domestic terrorists. And they're, they're trying to, to go after our children, and they're, they're trying to destroy our way of life. And, uh, hey, Philip, you know, we're not we're standing for it. Hey, Philip, can I, can I, can I uh, what's that one? My husband's 62 and been smoking. Oh, wow. I've been smoking. <laughs> such a, but, Philip, I'm going to tell Scott about these books that you found. Hey, listen to this. We all found out that there were some books going around in in the school libraries. I don't I don't know if they're in Ohio, but one of them was called George. One of them was called Lawn Boy. And one of them was called Transgender Queer. Now, these were in school libraries, um, elementary schools. And um, I hope there's not books like that in the state of Ohio. I mean, it is horrible what these things, what was Philip ordered the books and they were just completely filthy, nasty books. Yeah, I think parents would be surprised at some of the options in, in our education system today. Wow. So that got away from us. We didn't put our, our eyeball on that, I'm afraid. And for the last 25 years, the teachers unions have cause had, had a heyday uh, with nobody reining them in. So oh. a whole different issue. I agree. Um but but certainly something that we need to consider. There's let's the, you got an interesting comment up here about Go ahead. Joe Blystone. Um, a lot of people are following Joe and his work for running for governor over the past year. Um, I've talked to Joe several times, many times about all these tough issues, and uh, he he I think what's interesting about his race is he's got the common man. If you look at Joe's history and being a farmer, he's a common guy. And he's got the common man understanding that. So my hope is that allows him to have a voice with Governor DeWine so so that, that Governor DeWine sees what the common man is saying through Joe Blystone. So I really think that Joe's candidacy can help pull the Republican Party back together. I Well, I, I went to the Trump rally up here in Wellington, Ohio, um, and uh, Renacy was there. You know I like Renacy. You know I'm a big Renacy supporter. Right. So, I mean – yep. I, I ain't got anything against Blystone, you guys. Don't think that. But And you guys, Joe Blystone's a guy that's running for um, governor here in Ohio. I think he's an independent, right, Scott? I think he's an independent. I don't think he's a Republican. Oh. I know they wouldn't even let him in the Trump tent with Renacy and them. Uh, yeah. well, this is... I didn't know. Scott, yeah. we're, um, the, the American people out here, we do not want that Build Back uh, deal that they're trying to <laughs> build, push through. Americans, there. we don't want that. And we didn't even want the infrastructure because we know that only 9% of it's for roads and bridges and lead pipe removal. I know. And uh, they're pushing in stuff that we don't stand for. The American. It comes uh, some else calls him. And that, it's, really, it's really hurting us. You know, it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to tear us apart. And uh, these people need to, y'all need to stand strong with it. And we'll support you and we'll do everything we can to, to put good guys like you in office and uh, stand behind the Republican Party. I as think. Long as, since the the Democrats know what's getting ready to happen in the midterms, because Virginia and New Jersey just showed a little bit of a snippet of what's going to happen. They're going to try to force feed everything they can possibly do in the next year before we get back some control. And you're right. Congress added the progressive wing of the Democrat Party added so many things in there that none of us would believe in. None of us would want to see our dollars invested that way. And they disregard debt like it doesn't exist. It just oh, doesn't exist. Well, we're almost a thirty trillion dollar debt right now in this country. You know, you know, Mr. Scott, it's really, it's really something. Whenever you got a a, a Democrat, which is a Mansion, trying to put the brakes on it, and he's the only guy trying to put the brakes on it. And yeah. then when everything's voted in for the infrastructure bill, we got thirteen Republicans that go along with that crap. That's that's crazy, man. I We're worry. I worry about somebody here. like Joe Manchin. How long can he hold this? Because he's right. being attacked by everybody. 
Every side's yeah. attacking him. Yes. So when does he finally say, hell, I don't need this? I mean, Rob Portman, exactly. Rob said, we can't get any work done and just walked away. Well, he, he's not running again this year. No, right? he said, no. we said there's, you can't do anything. And he's talking about so, our, one of our senators here in Ohio, uh, Philip, Rob Portman. Right. And I think that yeah. what if Manchin does that? Because he's at least blocking some of the crazy stuff that the ideas we may not believe in. So I worry about somebody yeah. like that just walking away. You but all right, I'll, I'll let y'all go so y'all can get more callers and stuff. And uh, we're behind you, Mr. Scott, and uh, we'll stand strong as hard as we can and fight as hard as we can. Thanks, Phil. And Mr. Doc, oh. appreciate you uh, giving us the opportunity to, to talk. All right, man, no problem. Hey, Scott's a good guy. I mean, ain't many state representatives would come to, to, to a house like this. I mean, Scott's a one-of-a-kind guy, I'm telling you. He's just an average guy like us, Philip. I didn't come to see I Don. Know. I came to see Linda. She's here. <laughs> oh, there she is. She's right, out here now with us. Y'all have a good night. All, All right, right boss. Thanks, Philip. Thank you. All right, we're going to take a call from Waterbug. Uh, I had hung up. Um, I don't know. Somebody want to call in now? Um, Philip just hung up. I'll take a couple more uh, calls while Scott's here. And I, he's a busy guy, you guys. Scott is a really busy man. So, um, and that just went away somewhere. But somebody call in. I'll take two more calls while Scott's here. And I know he's got stuff to do. So, Waterbug. Hello. How you, how you doing, Waterbug? Hey, I want to say hello to Mr. Scott there. Scott. Oh, how you doing, sir? Good. I appreciate your service. Hi. I appreciate you. I'm good. Yeah, yeah. Waterbug's from Georgia. Oh, so. hey, Waterbug. Yeah, I'm down here in South Georgia. I appreciate y'all uh, service and all. Everybody's on here. It's, this country, man, it's, it's in a mess, man. We just need we need we need prayers and we need people to get out and fight for this country. We need to get new voters come in here and vote. You know, Republican. You know, I mean, not just the Republican. Just anybody's the better what we got, Miss Scott. What do you think? Yeah, I think it's tough. Georgia, we really got screwed in Georgia because I think we won Georgia, and you saw after midnight what happened in Georgia. Yeah, yeah. So that's one of those examples of we've lost control. Just like we might have taken our eye off of the education and the curriculum being taught in our schools. We've got to get our eyes back on this whole damn voting system and the voting machines and, and this after midnight voting stuff has got why can forty five states count their votes and five have to wait till overnight to yeah. count them? And so, it's never happened before. So there's there's a few issues that we better get our arms around. You know, it's so it's so it's so sad, uh Connor Scott, it's so sad that the young generation I ain't talking just about the young generation. I'm talking about all generations. They don't understand that the American people, you just can't rely on the doggone people coming from the southern border. That's what I worry about more than anything. They worry about the southern border. That's what I worry about if I have grandkids, uh, Brother Scott. The borders. Think of the border 18 months ago, everybody. It was really in control. We were building the wall. Yes. It was safer. It was safer for our border patrol officers. They weren't in the mess they're in now. We were limiting the amount of people coming into our country illegally, which meant we didn't have to provide health care and education for illegals. Maybe we can go do it for our veterans, for example. Yeah. Right? Yes. Yeah. And now, 18 months, look ahead 18 months, what the hell happened? So, okay, I'm going to get John, I'm gonna get off when you take somebody else call. I'm just going to say uh, I respect the Congress right there, Mr. Brother Scott, and uh, bless his heart. Do your job. That's all we ask. I, you do your job anyway. And I love y'all, Donald Whisper and Linda, and I hope Linda's doing good. If uh, I if I, I make a mistake, I'm going to hear from Dom pretty quick. Well, I, I, I'm going to tell you, Scott, straight up now. I mean, uh, even if I if I piss Scott off, he's going to let me have it. And <laughs> I did. I think I pissed him off once. He don't care. He'll let you and have I it. Called. That's yeah, right. Yeah, Scott will let me have it, brother. So, um, see you, Waterbug. Thanks, Waterbug. All right. Um, I'll take one more call for Scott, and um, I'll end this out. Um, somebody else call in. Come on, let's hear one more caller. We got Floyd Croucher out there watching. Um, now, Scott. This will grow because um, you know this did get put into a lot of groups and it probably won't be 
submitted until tomorrow, like Franklin and okay. Lebanon and places like that. And um, right. I don't, you know, and I'm going to let everybody know right now, I don't listen to the bad comments. I, I, I kind of block them out. So anybody comes on and watches the replay of this tomorrow or something, just don't make any bad comments. I mean, Scott's sitting there. He didn't have to come over here. Now he come over here because I asked him to. He's a great guy. And um, anybody want to call, it's your time right now. Um, time's to call. I got a I got a state representative here, a state legislator. Um, now Scott, if, if say say like if we'd had trouble here in 2020 with Trump lost Ohio, and he said, "Oh, they cheated in Ohio," I'm sure you guys would have fought hard to um to take care of that problem, wouldn't you? Well, Secretary of State Frank LaRose seems to have a good team in place. Um, when I joined the legislature, he was a legislator, and then he ran for statewide. So we've got a Republican auditor and a Republican secretary of state. We have a Republican treasurer. So we think we have watchdogs there. Um, but but Secretary LaRose has been very good in updating the legislature. So I don't I don't think we're off the rails here. But again, you know what? We took our eyes off education 20 years ago. And look what happened um, in only 18 months. Look what happened at the border to us. Yeah. So I, I, I mean, I really respect Frank LaRose. I think he's a hell of a good man. But that doesn't mean he gets to go unchecked. He's still got to understand the values of the people he represents. All right. Well, we're getting another call. We're going to have one more call. Hello. Can I get your first name and what state are you calling from? Sure. First name and what state are you got to You got to turn me off in the background. Whatever device you're listening to, you got to turn it down. Background. Okay. Hold on a second. You got to turn it down. Okay. Hold on. Okay. Hold on a second. You got to turn it down. Set reverse. Okay. Okay, can you I'm hear here. me now, Don? I can hear you. Okay, your number was misprinted. It was you put five one two three four. Oh, three. I did, didn't I? I did that last week, you guys. I'm sorry about that. Er. Well, you can dress him call, up, but you but... can't take him out. <laughs> <laughs> well, Scott Litz ought to run for governor in the state of the high. No, thank but you. Man that comes yeah. to your house and talks to the public, that would be a good man for the governor. Well, Scott, I mean, honestly, would you ever consider running for governor? No, no, stop. Scott, stop, be stop. honest here. I don't what? want to yell at you in front of your buddies. Okay, so uh, no. All right. I'm would, having, I, a, I'm having a rough I, enough time being chairman of the West Don. Indian, I think you'd make a great governor. That's very kind of you, sir. We've tried very hard. The hours we put in, I, I had no dream that health committee would do this. And we've been, there's been weeks I've been there 65 and 70 hours, and this is a part-time job. So, but it demanded it. And we still didn't pass 248, so we can't quit now because we got to pass the 435. Yeah. But we have to amend it to have the discrimination clause to protect Ohioans. It's it, um, you guys. Politics is um, it's it's kind of confusing. I'm confused sometimes, Scott. I mean, it is. There's a lot to it if you really don't well, sit down study. Pass it. a I mean, bill out of committee. Pass a bill out of the House. Pass a bill out of Senate. Get it to governor, and then have a veto override. I mean, there's a lot of steps. Yes, and um, what you about know, this reconciliation bill they're doing without was, without Republican it, support? There was 800 bills introduced in the Ohio House last year, and only 100 passed. Really so it shows you how hard it is to pass a bill. Wow. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, hey. hey. If you'd run for governor and get elected, you'd put all this stuff down. See? Yeah. No. <laughs> Thank you. That's kind I mean, of you. I, but I, no. I mean, I, I'm, I'm telling you, you ought to run for governor. I mean, I mean, you're if you come to Dollar Whispers and do a live video, you won't find many politicians do that. You need no, you to be won't. in the government seat. I'm telling you, I mean, like I say, I live in West Virginia, and I'm, mean, you know, it is what it is. But I was like his I say, neighbor for years. So the funny thing is, right now, I'm not going to get invited back. I can tell you, you know why. <laughs> Show him, Don. Show him. There. I, I An hour and 10 minutes, no cigarette. He's not inviting me back. You come well, back. <laughs> he'll light up one here directly. Oh, well, I'm yeah. a smoker, too. But He's like waiting. I said, I, I, think you, I think you ought to run for governor for a high. Well, I think I'm gonna... a good governor. I, I, I love Donald Wisman and Mark Hatfield and yep. two dumbass farmers. I watch them religiously every weekend and uh, I miss a few of their videos through the week, but sometimes I don't get notifications. But uh, I, I consider Donald Wisman a brother. They don't. And if you come to his house and speak to the public, 
there's nothing better than that. Well, thank you. Don's a, he's, he's good for me because he educates me. He keeps me up to uh, 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 the issues at hand and I've enjoyed being a state representative. Yeah. I educate County. you. Um, I'm, I'm lost sometimes. I got to call Scott and I know what's this mean? And you know, but anyway, thank you so much, man. We appreciate you calling brother. Hey, I'm going to send you a message here in a, a couple of days and I'm going to send you a gift package from West Virginia. Well, you don't have to. I'm not on here to, to take money or nothing. I'm not on here for that. I'm on here because I love my country, brother. I've watched you for the last couple of years, and I, I'm going to send you a gift package from West Virginia. But I'll send you a message. You can get your address and everything. All right. And I'm going to send you a gift package, and uh, I hope you enjoy it. And like I say, you need to talk to that man get him in the governor's office. Hey, I mean, I just hope we can keep him a state rep. Uh, and he's been governor. <laughs> hey, I got a woman calling for, that lives here in Ohio, so we're going to take her call. Be there. All right, y'all have a good night. God you know bless. Him? Yeah, he's strong. All right, thank you, brother. Bye. Bye. Um, hello, Carolyn, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Can um, you hear me? Yeah, I guess you're going to tell Tony something out there about this. Um, yeah. Hi, Carolyn. Hang on. Hey, Tony, I just saw your note that your rep is John Cross, Representative Cross uh, from the uh, Indian Lake area, uh, is strong. He's a sophomore representative, um, got his feet on the ground as a freshman, and has had a very good sophomore term. Um, and he's a no-take-prisoner kind of guy. He if he believes in something, I'm going to tell you what, he's going to fight until his, if his little finger's moving, he's still fighting for it. So I would say you you contact John or I'll work with you and get hook you up with John and make sure you get your issues to, to cross and he'll listen. So, so thank you. I just want to say that. So Carolyn, hi, how are you? I'm fine. I'm glad to hear you talking. Um, my, my concern um, is what, if anything, is Ohio doing to stop all these illegals being dropped into our state? Uh, the Biden came out, they had a map, and they showed 879 of uh, the um, yeah. Afghans being dropped in northern uh, Ohio. Right. I don't know how true that is. I'm going by the map, by the map and uh, what they're saying in the news. So I'm wondering if anything, and, and especially not just the Afghans, but the um, the, the illegals yeah. coming in right. through the border. How is there being any kind of control over that? So, so many illegals have been allowed in. They have to find some place to, they, they all can't be in Texas or New Mexico. Okay. They have to do some Arizona. So they are exporting them from those states out into the other states. Some of the more blue or liberal states, their governors are taking lots of them us being a much more conservative state, Governor DeWine was able to limit that amount. And of course, I already mentioned, he went to the border himself right, right. and he sent troops down to the border to help. So we've tried to fight that back. So now Attorney General Dave Yost is in a lawsuit to stop this activity. So Ohio is really, I have to, for all the things we've done wrong, Ohio has done a pretty damn good job with fighting the border crisis. So so we, we're, I'm pretty proud of Ohio's response right now. Good enough, Carolyn? That's fine. I just wanted to know where we stood. Thank you. Thank yeah. you for coming on. Thank you, Thanks, Carolyn. Bye-bye. Good night. All right. Thanks, Carolyn. You're yeah, welcome. She lives in Ohio, so um, mm. she just uh, – and uh, I guess um, that's great. I mean, I'm I'm glad we said them. I mean, I, I know the blue states are going to accept these people, but, Scott, listen, I don't have a problem with people coming here migrating to this country. I, I don't have – I welcome you if you come here the right way, but um, how does it make – those people feel they had to come here the right way and they see these people coming over here and, and they're, they're promising amnesty and all this and that. I mean, that's not fair. I mean, just across the border and all of a sudden you get this and that and these people had to work hard for it. I mean, it's, it's, I, it's wrong. I mean, well, I agree, but I would take it one step farther and say, what about the American veteran or the American disabled veteran? Nobody has ever said we're going to give them $435,000. No, you're right. 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 So what the hell are we doing? Should our priorities be readjusted there and take care of the veterans or disabled veterans first and then say now people that entered illegally correctly. So they entered legally. Now they get helped and protected. Maybe we do give them health insurance for a certain amount of the time. The ones that came here the right way. Legally. legally. That's right. Yeah, he's then talking we, legally. We can help them for a certain period of time, get on their feet, get a job, get some training. 
a certificate so they can go to work as a welder. I mean, let's do something. But this free stuff with an unlimited just because of a future vote is wrong. It's hurting Americans. Country. It's yeah. hurting America. So, Amer so, so you believe you agree with America first. I do. The America first. Well, we're going to, we're going to show that in the upcoming midterms. So, so, okay. Are we wrapping up? Scotty, um, you can take over. I'm going to smoke me a cigarette and talk not to yet. for a little bit. Well, not but, uh, yet. You can't smoke it yet. I need to wrap up. I want to talk about an issue that's important to me. Well, Scotty's going to talk about an issue that's important to him, then I'm going to smoke a cigarette. So uh, go ahead, Scott. I want to close by telling you I need your help, too. Um, there's a situation in southwestern Ohio that happened several years ago about a first-grade gym teacher who sexually molested or touched 88 children in one of our schools. Ooh. It happened over in the Springboro district, Clear Creek Elementary. I didn't hear about it. Okay, that. so one of the little girls came home and she was down and depressed and said to her mommy, I didn't get to sit on the teacher's lap or something. And everybody went, what? So we put cameras in the school and we have video evidence of 36 children. So he was arrested on 88 because when they interviewed the children, 88 of the children identified these inappropriate touches, Ooh. but we only had video evidence on 36. He was found guilty on 34 of the 36 charges, got seven years in jail. The problem is the bill is called Aaron's Law. It's House Bill 105. I've had it in the GA, the General Assembly now, for three terms, so five years, and I've not been able to pass this bill. Why? And this bill strictly does two things. If you are first through eighth grade, it teaches you what appropriate touch is. One of the ladies who testified had been raped by her father, and she was at five was told this is what this is right. This is a family thing. So finally, when she was 13, a girlfriend said to her, this is wrong. You know that, right? She goes, no, my family taught it me. It's right. So she'd never had anybody tell her what inappropriate touch is. So we're just teaching children. It's protected curriculum. We've got this curriculum because 37 states. 37 states have passed this damn law, but not Ohio. So it bothers me that the pedophiles have a stronger lobby than the children of Ohio. Oh, wow. So I've waited all night to say that. And somebody just went by and said, if you're not protecting the children, you're not doing anything. I have tried with House Bill 105 for five years to pass Aaron's law and was not able to do it. And it's being held. It passed the House with over 90 votes. But the Senate's got it on hold and hasn't been voted out of the Ohio Senate yet. So I need any of you in Ohio to make sure you send notes, calls, or texts to the Ohio Senate saying pass HB 105. So let me tell you what it does. It doesn't teach sex education. Nobody's going to show a picture of a male genitalia or female genitalia to any children. What it does is it takes first through eighth and teaches them appropriate touch. What's right, what's wrong, space, limitations. If it's nine through 12, it morphs into aggressive behaviors. What does no mean? No means no sexual abuse at that point. So that's the only two concepts the bill does. The curriculum is proven, certified. It's in 37 states. And I would like your help passing this in Ohio. And this will be in the local. It, it'll get approved in the local um, the town groups here. like the Well, the school so. and it protects parents. We're not Let's we're go. not teaching parents anything they don't want to that they don't want their children to get. For example, in the bill itself, there is a required notification that before the curriculum is taught to your child, you get notified in advance and have a link to the curriculum so you can see it. So parents get to know what we're doing. This is not, we're not hiding anything. We're trying to save children. Save children. And Scott, it's weird you brought that up. Um, I was reading a, a thing earlier today, a, a news article, this, this um, university professor, um, Alan Walker, he wrote this book um, about people who are attracted to minors. Now, this, this is a professor. Um, he said a group he believes is misunderstood and should be destigmatized. Now, listen to this. These are people who's thinking about this in their head. He calls these people maps, uh, minor attracted people. He wants them to call them that, you know, because it sounds better than pedophiles, right? Yeah. Um, this, this he, I mean, and this is sick. He, he, he thinks it's, um, it's okay for adults to have the attraction in their, now, for minors as long as they don't act on it. Now, Scott, I think anybody thinking about hurting a child or doing something to a child, they don't need to just, they need to be locked up somewhere. I mean, why would anybody even have a thought of that? 
having something to hurt a child. I, I don't know. I'm, I, okay, well, I don't know of this situation. I, I so I mentioned earlier that Don educates me. So you're getting the me up to speed on this. So I just Googled it. He wrote a book called A Long Dark Shadow by Alan Walker. Uh, it's a paperback, and it was printed by University of California Press. Go figure. California is involved. That's sure as hell, except uh, understandable. Uh, it says, A Long Dark Shadow, A Minor Attracted People and Their Pursuit of Dignity. Man, minor mm. attracted people. That's what he wants to call them, to destigmatize them. That stigma itself, this is a quote, that stigma itself can lead to harm. <laughs> You think <laughs> it should, should? Okay, sorry. Yeah, you, I don't have time to educate. I know, but if you go tell beat. your doctor that you're thinking about doing Look, something to a minor, you need to, you need some okay, help. Okay, so th now you see you're going to get me shook up. This guy can write a book telling you this is okay, and I can't pass a damn law in Ohio that says we're going to try to protect our children from this. 37 states have done it, but we haven't. I need help in the Ohio Senate, Don. All right. Well, we're going to do our we're going to do our best to help you, Miss. All right, Scott. Scott. Scott, we're gonna do our best to help you. All right. And um, man, I, I guess I wanna I wanna thank you for coming over here sure. tonight. Let's do it again. I had fun. Did you really? Honestly? Let me get let's get a through few more bills saved back up, okay. some guns. And I, I know we didn't get to talk about another very controversial issue. We're pretty tough on it in Southern Ohio is abortion. There's three abortion bills sitting in the house right now. I didn't bring the paperwork on. I'm totally but, against. I, I but, believe a, a right? life well, starts at conception. No, Scott, we know. I'll never we've got some good bills here, we'll protect, but but I knew CRT was hot, and I think guns are a big deal right now. And then, of course, the, the jab issue. So we'll wait a month or two, collect up some new data, and we'll come back. You guys hear that? He's going to come back and do a follow-up video when, when we get a few more bills and stuff passed, right? Yeah. In the meantime, thanks, everybody. And if you have questions, get them to Don. He'll text them up to me, and I'll come back, come back over, or I'll call him. So, Scott, right before you leave, um, what's the best thing we as citizens can do? I mean, I know yeah. we're going to say vote. we got to get out here and vote. But yeah, no. Is there anything else we can do at, okay. right now? Yeah, this, so this is a great question, Don. It's a good ending. A lot of people want to know about how do you contact your legislator? Have one live 10 doors away. That helps a hell of a lot yeah. right? for me and Don. You get a free if, shirt, too. If you don't work like that, then I say that just calling our Columbus office, it doesn't do anything. For example, when 248 was hot, I was getting 1,200 calls a day. So wait a minute. You know, everybody here a while back was saying, oh, call your uh, representative. Call your congressman. Do they actually care if you call? Uh, I, I think, mean, does I it think, make a difference? If you're making phone calls to your senator or your congressman. Yeah, it's not fair to say it that way, Don. I think they, they're, they care. A great majority, 75 of the 99 state reps care, I tell you. There's a few that are trying to be senators or that are trying to be congressman or governor. So there's a few that maybe they're a little misguided. They're moving on to something else, but 75 of them care. Or even like so, your U.S. But, representatives and U.S. congress. Yeah. If we're getting 1,200 calls a day, you know we're not answering the phone. I can't take 1,200 calls a day. So let's go on to staff. So the staff is writing a note. Person called opposed to 248. Person called in favor of 248. Democrat from Cleveland, because we always ask, our office asks where you're from. Right. So if you're from Warren County, obviously that matters more to me than if you're from Cuyahoga County. Of course, I mean, I, I care that you're in Ohio, but if you're a Warren County, and you, the, the points go up, right? Right. So two things you do. One, come see us locally. The number one way is meet us, say hi to us, track us down. Every state rep has library hours or holds some kind of fundraiser at the Moose or American Legion. Um, the, I got a buddy in Cleveland. He has donuts with Dave one Saturday a month. Go have a donut with a guy. You get 15 minutes with him. Right. You've met him. He's seen your face. Then you come to Columbus to an event. Come see us. You'll see all the stuff that's up there. Make an appointment with our office. Come up. You'll get 20 minutes. If a person cares so much about their issue that they'll see you at home and see you in Columbus, the bell goes off. We go, uh-oh, this isn't some crackpot who's just wanting to do five minutes of fame on the internet or five minutes of fame on a phone call. You care that much about your issue that you saw me here at home in the district or you, and you saw me in Columbus. When you tie that together, it just multiplies. Then, then I'll tell you a funny thing happens. We'll take your call. You've got my cell phone. Well, another thing, Scott, when he gives you his business card, it's got his number on it. It don't have a, a right. number to an office or whatever. That's, oh, no. He gets your call. And sometimes my, he can't my answer personal busy, cell phone. Right. But he will call you back. I mean, Scott. I days. text a lot. Text me. Yeah. And Don knows that. But um, I text a lot. Find your state rep. Find him. I mean, you, there's Scott Lips out there. Well, not like this guy, but there's people out there like Scott, okay? 
Maybe not as good as Scott. There's some really good yeah. state reps, you guys. I would share with you. There are some that really can carry the water. And we're getting a lot of thank you, Scott's on there. And thank oh, you, guys. I want to thank yeah. everyone of you coming here. Um, just listen to us tonight. And um, this will grow, Scott. This video will grow. It's on YouTube. It'll start growing and growing and growing. And hopefully a lot of people see this. You know what doesn't grow? What's that? Your hair. My <laughs> Right, Linda? Listen to Linda. Like, I'm bald. He said one thing does not grow. It's my hair. So uh, <laughs> I, I lost my hair in my 20s. So uh, thank you. You're a good man, Don. You're a, you're Thanks, a, you're buddy. even better, man. Good thank seeing you. you. Bye, everybody. Thanks for having me, you guys. We'll be back. And you got the captain's chair tonight, too, by the way. Thank you, sir. That's, I call thank that you. Kirk's chair. That's you know, it? Star Trek. Yeah. There you go. Scott, All right. thank you, brother. We'll do it again. We'll All be right. back. Give me. Let's get a few new issues back, Broiling. All right. Well, All I'm right. going to sit here and talk to the people right. a little bit. Thanks, everybody. Love you, Scott. All right, baby. See you. See you, man. See you, man. Get something to drink on your way out. All right. Linda. Open that fridge. Get you whatever. Well, you, you tell him. You guys, all right. I'm by myself here. Um, Mr. Lips is back here talking to my wife. I'm back in the captain's chair. Um, there's Floyd. <laughs> yeah, that's a Scott Lips tea, uh, shirt he gave me. Um, Scott Lips is a great guy, you guys. Honestly, um, just you you can't get a better state rep than that. And and I wish he would run for other all, but I sure do. Um so if anybody wants to call in, you can call in. If not, um, Carl Carl says, oh, yeah. He said, fire it up, Linda. Here she goes, baby. I was waiting. Um, how long? Have we, me and Scott's been on here. One hour and a half, no cigarettes, Scott. Hour and a half, no cigarette. Ah, cigarette. Hour and a half. Oh, that's a long damn time for me to go without a cigarette. But he's the chairman of the health committee. What am I going to do, sit here and smoke and give him cancer? I mean, I smoke like a freight train. <laughs> Thank you, Tony. Um, He did look up. Um, he, he He's seen your, um, who your uh, state rep is, and he said he's going to talk to him. So, uh, And believe me, Scott does what he says. Um, So, Tony, wouldn't be surprised if um, that guy won't be getting a hold of you, man. Um, Anybody want to call in? You're more welcome to call in. Um, if since I got the right number, let's see, 513-435-6600. And I did, you guys, you know, I did that last week. I, I put the damn, wrong damn number up. And um, I'm glad somebody pointed that out to me. Hello, Kathy Coley Cope. How are you doing? There's uh, Lynn Biddy Brapper. We got Stacy Pfeiffer on here. Like I said, my Floyd friend, uh, my friend Floyd Croucher. We got Alan Hatfield. We got Becky uh, Vanskoy. Uh, let's see here. There's Greg. Who? Uh, David Jones is out there. Laura, Laura Matty. Um, Jason Lee, Philip Roop, um, and uh, I, I seen some more earlier, you guys. Neil Martin. Um, anyway, just thank every one of you guys for um, being a part of this tonight. And and you know, how how many people can actually get a state rep to come to their house? Um, Arbor Diamond, how are you doing? Tammy Crane, uh, there's Bob out there. Bob, it just says Bob. No last thing. He says, you know, I I I I know my state rep. That's a damn shame. You know, I don't know my state rep. That's a damn shame. I don't know. Get to know him, Bob. Um, what's up, Greg? Southern Hailstorm. If you want to call in, call in. There's Mark Shepard. What's up, Mark Shepard? Wyatt Fitzwater. Wyatt, I'm glad you got to meet Mark Catfield. Mark Catfield is a great man. I'm glad you got to meet him, brother. And um, hope you got some of Mark's good stuff for you. There's Rod Welts. What's up, Rod? How you doing? Um, well, uh, he said he'd be back. I guess he had fun. Um and Kathy says, I watched this on my uh, big stream. Well, all right, that sounds pretty cool. Um, probably brought my ugly mug in a lot closer watching it on a big screen. Um, but this cigarette does taste pretty good, you guys. Actually went out on me. Um, let's see, Polly up Washington. Uh, I don't know what that means, John Lane. But anyway, does anybody else want to call in? Uh, Bob said, uh, Don, this is Bob Reed from uh, Alabama. We all, oh, hey, what's up, Bob Reed? Um, let's see. We got Pappy Joe 42. What's up, Pappy? How you doing? And, um, yeah, it was good to hear from Waterbug. Um, we got, we got big D business. Um, pray for my nephew and, 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 and Parm. Listen, you guys, one thing I want to do is I know there's a lot of people out there right now that's sick. A lot of people out there has got problems. I mean, they got a lot of problems and, um, I, I didn't call pastor Steve tonight because I had Scott here plus pastor Steve, um, he just lost his mother. I, I read the post a few days ago, and I, I didn't want to bother him tonight. So um, myself, I'll send prayers to each and every one of you. And I, I see a lot of posts on Facebook, and um, a lot of us folks were human. We, we we all going through our own set of problems. And um, 
I think, I mean, hopefully, thank God, I mean, we'll make it through it, all right? I mean, I know I'm going through a lot of problems myself right now. I'm having a lot of problems. And um, Kathy Ferdino said, State Senator Lang soon on show. Yeah, well, I don't know. It's Floyd Croucher said, yes, um, Floyd, um, here pretty soon, you guys. I'm going to try my best to get um, Ohio State Senator George Lang to go live. And I'll get Floyd Croucher. We'll go live down at the um, uh, Republican headquarters. And um, that would be a good video. Sean Anthony, Pastor Steve, um, been having some rough. Yes, Pastor Steve's been having a rough time, you guys. So um, let's all pray for him, too. Um, let's see. Uh, uh, what is a big D business? Sending prayers and condolence for Steve. Yeah. Southern Health Stores has Donald Biden is trying to shut down pipeline in Michigan. If he does, your gas will double. I'm, I'm telling you, I, you know, I don't get scared much, Hellstorm, but I'm, I'm telling you, I, I think I'm scared for my children and grandchildren. I'm, I think they're going to try to starve us to death in this country. And like Mark Hatfield said earlier, there ain't going to be no, uh, there ain't going to be no middle class. That's what he was trying to tell you. There's either going to be filthy rich people in this country or just completely downright poor people in this country. They're, they want two types of people. They're going to try to eliminate the middle class, you guys. And uh, is David Jones still out there? David, I don't see you anywhere. Where you at, buddy? I don't see any comments. Um, I see Phillips out there. Or Sean Anthony. Um, yeah, it'd be a good one. George Lang is another. He's another great guy. He's he's an Ohio State senator, and um, we'll get him on here live. We'll get him. We'll go live with him. Um, Bob says, "Do what, Becky? You talking about you talking to Don Riders? I don't know what you guys are talking about. Let's see. Yeah, we can all pray for Pastor Steve." Um, Tony Lawrence says Toledo, Ohio, um, won't let Biden shut that pipeline down. I hope not, Tony. I hope not. Rich and poor, just just like any yeah, just like any socialist country, they they don't want the middle class, folks. Um, actually, they don't even want poor. They want you poverty. Poor ain't good enough. They want you to be totally dependent upon them. I mean, they actually want you to sit out there and get a handful of rice every day. That's what it's going to come to in this country, folks, if something isn't done. And I don't have any clues what to do. I don't know. Just trying to, I'm trying to get answers like you guys. Um, Styles is praying for you, Donald. Well, thank you, uh, Lynn Biddy. I'm praying for you, too. I, I pray for everybody. Everybody out there that's having a problem, I'll pray for you. Um, I ain't ashamed to pray. Um. Carl, um, Carl, what's up? He said, just like California. Um, I'm trying to read some of your comments, y'all. Get your costume on. Had to find the right um, D. Wisman YouTube. There's there's a few. Mine's under Donald Wisman, so I'm glad you made it in. Susan Osborne says, Biden out to kill or hurt us. He's out to destroy our damn country, Susan. Hellstorm. Um, they're not even trying to close our border. We we are being overrun. Yes, when we're being invaded. It's a down damn right damn invasion right now. Um, well, thank you there, uh, Big D business. Um, we're just yeah, you're right, Styles. Um, Glenn. Um, I'm not even living. Most of us are not living. We're we're surviving. That's all we're doing. We're surviving, you guys. Um, and I guess if nobody else is gonna call in, my number's up there, but um I'll go ahead and um, I'm going to end this video, but you guys don't go nowhere just yet. You guys know how I like to end my videos. So um, let's go. Let's take this video out with a little bit of Pastor Steve. Does that sound all right with you guys? Um, Heroes. It's a really good song. So um, hang on a second. Let me get it going here. Damn, With a sign next to his feet And written on a cardboard Damn things gonna kill me Would you help me please And people passing by him They pretend that he's not there The only thing yeah, we that's will, we the people, brother. the wind are the cold hard stairs thank you guys you'll never know how much he sacrificed thank each and every one of you for coming on tonight thanks john newton tours and v thank you bob bob zero thank you lost his life he's an old hero that no one remembers thank you chrissy thank you he got shot in the war, the 
they sent him back home. They gave him a discharge. Now he's fighting. Bye, long. Philip. And when those bullets were flying, his friends were dying. He could have laid down his windows, but he kept on fighting. He fought for our daughters and sons. We must not forget what our soldiers right, and Lynn. heroes have done. Lynn, you're right. Styles, um, yes, um, uh, you said something there I really like, Lynn, um, but we will make it with the good Lord by our side. With that being said, Lynn, that's, that's great to go off with. We will make it with the good Lord by our side, you guys. We will we will overcome. We'll win. We'll get our country back, folks. Um, we might have to starve a little bit, but we'll get her back. With that being said, love you guys, and I'll see you all soon. Uh, still, try to share this around. Let's get some people, uh, let's get the views up on this thing. Hell, why not? You guys have a good one. God bless you. Bye, Hellstorm. Bye, everybody. Bye, John Lane, Philip, pa Polly Malone, Tammy Crane, John Nugent, um, Lynn, uh, uh, Big D Business. See you guys later. Bye-bye.